on the interplay of monetary policy and fiscal policy front on complex dynamics there right i mean they may not see this as inflationary in sort of the true sense if the fiscal impulse is you know neutral to slightly positive but the supply demand dynamics are anyway going to sort of throw the rbi into a bit of a tizzy or at least they've thrown the bond market into a tizzy yes absolutely i think it's made it a bit complex for the rbi to put it subtly uh look you know rbi i think gradually was you know gearing up for a gradual uh, normalization of this uh, monetary policy uh, and i think now it's going to move a bit slowly because it will be worried about the fact that the bond market is already in a lot of stress and i think what this budget has ended up doing by announcing such a high gross market borrowing is that it's made the rbi a little unsure about its steps uh, and my worry is that everything will happen a bit later now uh, you know i had gone into the budget thinking that you know february one good boring conservative credible budget followed by a 20 bit reverse repo rate hike on 9th february in the policy meeting rbi policy meeting but now the risk is that they won't do it and they will just push it out to the next meeting and then we'll see where the next meeting goes so i think uh, this has really slowed the uh, rbi's um, you know uh, policy normalization uh, 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 part uh, and i think this is a problem right now at a time when uh, global central banks are tightening and investors are likely to become more selective uh, you know coming across as a country where uh, you know the tightening is sort of not happening on time things are getting a bit delayed is not the right signal you want to send at this point so i think uh, we have a problem there sonal how do you think they'll manage this well it's uh, clearly extremely challenging you know the net supply and if you uh, net out uh, the omos that the rbi has done over 2 trillion every year in the last couple of years the net supply hitting the market at a time when bank credit demand is picking up uh, index inclusion you know is sort of still a question mark so the demand supply dynamics clearly look uh, quite uh, uh, worrisome for the bond markets uh, and uh, the rbi uh, is going to face a challenge i mean you know the option of uh, you know they would not want the long end yields perhaps to go up uh, too much because that has an impact on uh, sort of longer term uh, growth uh, but even the ability to do uh, something like an operation twist uh, is sort of limited in scale now that they've also done a twist so it's going to be challenging so there's no two, two you know two ways about it but i don't think the budget really should be changing the monetary policy uh, normalization uh, schedule at all uh, i think you know the uh, so when you're in a pandemic and you have an uneven growth impact uh, it's extremely important for fiscal policy to do targeted support and push on longer term growth uh, the role of monetary policy at this stage is extremely limited in terms of providing benefit to the ones at the lower end of the uh, spectrum uh, and uh, i think the risks from the ultra accommodative uh, conditions and tolerating higher uh, inflation is really not creating the kind of stability you need to infor investments to come in so you know we've had both monetary and fiscal policy focusing on growth uh, i think going forward it's important Uh, as the government is focusing on growth and rightly so in an uneven recovery uh, for the monetary policy to focus on the stability angles inflation has been high cost pressures are building up core inflation is elevated um, you know expectations are uh, high current account deficit fiscal deficit high so all of those factors suggest that uh, you know normalization uh, should happen and i would say should have happened by now uh, in fact you know by not moving the fixed rate reverse three point keeping the corridor so wide it's just leading to too much volatility so uh, in fact i think it would be better for markets if this uncertainty is out of the way uh, and we start on the normalization uh, schedule so that there's greater policy certainty greater macro certainty macro stability down the line which is crucial uh, to attain growth No, actually, to both of you, why should they not move the reverse repo? I think there's just zero reason to keep that where it is now, given what's happened, you know, with V triple R rates, etc. Well, so, the, this uh, February policy, you don't think they'll do that, or they can? I mean, I mean, they should do this. This, you know, this should have been done in uh, December. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the. Uh, from an effective perspective the argument is that the weighted average uh, reverse repo rate is already close to 4 uh, so why do you need to move on this uh, perhaps it's the signaling angle of uh, moving the reverse repo rate uh, which is uh, holding them back 
um, the Omicron driven uncertainty, you know, may have played a role, but I think uh, markets are very well prepared for it. Uh, you know, the global dynamics, Fed, oil, domestic inflation, domestic fiscal, and just the, you know, reduced volatility for market participants, uh, given what we've seen with liquidity dynamics uh, lately. Uh, definitely calls for uh, the fixed rate, uh, you know, reverse repo hike and a normalization uh, of the corridor. So, I mean, we are expecting the uh, normalization uh, to happen, uh, you know, in uh, February and uh, April. And I think it should happen. Tanjali, you're not convinced at well. Well, look, I think it's the, the, the I think it's the best strategy to increase the reverse repo rate by 20 pips on the 9th February. You know, it's completely priced in. You give the right signals that, you know, you have sort of uh, acknowledged the inflation problem. Uh, it's very clear to me. Uh, but my worry is that for all the same reasons, the reverse repo rate was not hiked in December. Uh, it may not be hiked in February either. The fact that, you know, the RBI is okay about the weighted uh, VRRR rate to go up by 30, 40 bips, but it doesn't want to be seen as tinkering with policy rates as yet. You know, of course, reverse repo rate and repo rate are very different, but they just don't want to be seen as tinkering with any policy rate yet. Omicron is a reason. And if there's going to be stress in the bond market in the next couple of days, that could become an added reason. So there's a difference between what the RBI should do and would do. I what we all think they should do and what they think they should do. Okay, yeah, that's another way of putting it. Yeah.